Hi everyone, uh, thanks for joining me today uh, at uh, Suarez HQ. Yeah, it's that time of the year again when we're going to do the ultimate studio and uh, gallery tour. So, uh, great, well, I'm going to welcome you aboard. Let's go on in and have a look around, shall we? A few standout things that I really like here, so I'll probably just talk about those as we go around as well. Um, but this, I haven't released them yet, but I'm doing these with blocks, these artworks, and they're cast with resin and metallic flakes and hand cut and hand sanded uh, and placed resin blocks. Really love these, they're, they're, doing, they're doing it for me. Anyway, there's, there's several pieces like that. I'll be quiet. Let's go in, shall we? Let's go into the main bit of the gallery. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I got this place about seven years ago and it was completely derelict uh, when I moved in. Uh, I'll see if I can pop um, maybe a couple of photos in or maybe show you some photos in a bit of, uh, of what this used to actually look like, but it certainly didn't look anything like this. And it's just really just, you know, belligerence, hard work, resilience, determination, pick out all those nice words that you can think of uh, that's got us to this point, really. Just lots of investment, hiring the money back in, making this the best we can. You know, to be honest with you, this is this is a bit like uh, this is a bit like home, really. I suppose, and I like to have nice things in my home, so I tend to have nice things in the gallery too. So this is really nice space, one I uh, I really like coming into every day. This is quite an interesting one. Uh, this is um, we did this on a live stream. Don't know if you've caught the live streams. The live streams are, I think they're they're really cool. Actually, we're broadcasting every Wednesday, half past seven London time, across the internet. It's going phenomenally well. I mean, we just do some phenomenal things now on a Wednesday night. But this was one, another one of the ones that I really like that uh, I did, I think, I'm not quite sure, five, six weeks ago, something like that. Uh, real bit of a real challenge actually to get something as heavy and as big as this onto a rotating platform. Anyway, you can uh, you can probably see that at some point. So I'll, I'll try and show you, I'll show you where that is. But yeah, just one of the standout. Well, I, I think there's a load of standout pieces in here, but anyway, I'll, I'll let you be the judge of that. So yeah, main part of the gallery, we built all these walls. Uh, this was a complete open space when I moved in. But uh, over the years, we've laid umpteen floors. <laughs> this is the latest iteration, uh, which we laid last year, I think, uh, by hand, every single panel cut by hand. So that was done just to try and you know, make it look nice. I had concrete floors and all kinds of things. And oh my goodness, it just, well, it's never ending. You know, when you've got a building, you just want to preserve it, but you want to keep it looking nice. So there's plenty of uh, plenty of nice paintings, obviously, actually in here, as well. Uh, this uh, this happens to be another one. I've got to be honest. Uh, Flanders Fields. You know, I, I, I try to keep everything as light and as kind of uh, uh, I don't know effervescent as I possibly can in the painting. But occasionally you get that subject matter and you want to explore it and you want to have it as an inspiration. Think about it. And Flanders Fields. I'll leave you with this sentence. It's all to do with World War One, so it's an abstraction out of the thoughts about what happened during World War One. So anyway, that's that one. But I, I, there's something really quite, for me anyway, quite special about that one. It's just, you know, some things you resonate with, and some things you really, 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 really enjoy. And I think that was one of them. And uh, that, there's another one, saturation point. Actually, um, <laughs> uh, this time of the year, where um, as we approach spring, nice to get in touch with some of these you know, fresh colours, the greens and the yellows as we start to see bulbs starting to spring out and plants starting to regrow. Very happy one, that one. So as we have our kind of a wander around, there's lot, well, lots of different things to look at. Got a bit of carbon fibre over on the uh, feature wall just there. Had a little go uh, last year with some carbon fibre weave. That's been an absolute <laughs> nightmare to work with. And it's really quite, quite a learning curve as far as materials go. But I've really enjoyed working with it. And that is cast resin under that, by the way. That's not paint. So yeah, that, that's been a really interesting uh, project to do. And it's really actually, it's, it's kind of nice to work with new materials. You know, I love painting canvas, but I think, uh, you know, as a creative person, you're always looking for the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. You know, and sculpture's pretty much the same as well. You know, I've always had this desire to turn what you see on canvas and on a flat surface into something three-dimensional. So that's where the sculpture was born. And of course, because I like bright colours and happy things, <laughs> they're bright, happy colours. Well, those two are anyway. <clears throat> I'm always fascinated by 
forms and shapes and all that kind of thing. Um, and you can see that really in the, the, the wealth of different styles that are kind of working. That, that's if you can call them styles, of course. And um, yeah, going on the slightly bigger scale, again, if you're familiar with, with how big it goes, I mean, I'll show you some more big stuff in a while. So don't, please don't go away, we've got some magic big stuff coming. Uh, April Sky is another one, again, we're sort of approaching that time of the year. And uh, a little bit of inspiration from the storms that we get over here in the UK. to see around here as well and there's a, a couple of feature walls here featuring some of the other artwork and got some more sculptures so I'd obviously veg out and have a chat when you come here. No, we've got plenty more to show you so I think, uh, yeah, where should we go to next? Yeah, I think we should go through here. So. Uh, if you're ready, we're gonna go through into the back room. Okay, here we go. So we've got all this space out in the front, duplicated in the back and then some. So in here we've got the rest of the paintings and uh, i just put you to this one as well. So here we've got another one that was created during the live streams. Uh, while we're having you know, tremendous fun doing that, let's not forget you know, that whilst we're doing that kind of thing, you know, my main bread and butter here is you know, to sell paintings. I'm a business. That's exactly you know what I do. So all that you see in here, which is created outside of the live streams, which actually is only a very small part of the live streams, is the bread and butter of the business. So everything else that you see in here is created in that way. So as we walk through here, lots. Of, we try to keep the space really open because I mean, I'm really, really blessed with light in here. The light, the light is amazing, even on a slightly overcast day like it is today. So other standout uh, pieces, uh, this particular one, which was um, an inspiration of Monet's water lilies, but kind of abstracted out, if that makes sense. And uh, this features uh, ground up malachite, uh, which is a semi-precious stone, which is on there, plus 23.9 carat gold flakes, plus diamond. I kid you not, this has got proper certified diamond in it. So I'm really, really pleased with that one. It's quite a technical tour de force, but I've always been fascinated with Monet's works. I think at one point or another I was bound to do something. Could I do something that was kind of an homage to or in the style of? You know, it's not water lilies, but it's kind of influenced by. And as you can see, there are uh, little bits and pieces of canvases on the floor. So really what happens is when they're painted, and please stay tuned because I'm gonna show you very shortly where the paintings are done and exactly how they're done as well. So you'll understand it more in context as to why they're sat on the floor. So around here, we've got, got more paintings. Behind actually, uh, uh, this one just here, there's a, you can just see it, there's a great big long white board with, which has got some canvases on the back and this is where everything gets photographed. So this is the one part in the entire building where the light is at its best, especially kind of around you know, this time of the day. The light floods through, brilliant for natural light. I mean, the whole place is awash with natural light, it's brilliant. And we've got some bigger ones through here. I did mention we were going to get some bigger ones, a bigger one behind you as well, uh, called Bound for Glory. And then yeah, we've got some gigantic ones. As well. We're probably going to go back that way, obviously, in a little while, but you'll see some more of the larger ones. And uh, yeah, here I've got some more canvases just hanging up. These are just waiting to be stretched around their frames. In fact, actually, if you take a little sneaky peek uh, through here, you can see on the floor, there's quite a few canvases here. Now, <clears throat> these have been painted uh, recently, and there's all kinds and shapes and sizes here in one shape and form or another. And these are all just waiting again to go around their frames. So there's a, uh, uh, always a queue of paintings that are either going out, because obviously they sell really well, and paintings that have been done, which are just waiting to be uh, finished and be put around their frames. So there's, you know, this is very much a working space. It is, this is, this is where I work, you know, it looks great, but it's also the place where it's all done. So have to use the space effectively. And that's what those are doing down there. Now there's a series of, I think there's 10, uh, four of which you're looking at there. If we just have a whiz back. So yeah, there's another six here. And actually what's really exciting about these, these are 10 samples that have been done for, I can't really say a, a global 
a global brand which uh, we're going to be working with very very soon so we're just in that process at the moment of finalizing you know the kinds of things that we want to do with uh, with this particular company who you would know if i told you who it was but i can't say anything so we'll, we'll just move on so lots of exciting things going on right sneaky peek through the stuff no one normally gets to see so we've got an l shape here behind the curtains a bit like the wizard of oz you know the man's behind the curtain and up here i've got canvases which are stored i'm not going to have a look seems here uh, so canvases being stored uh, things waiting for another day, things destapled off their frames, so lots of things in different states and forms, maybe waiting to go back to something. Plenty of tooling, I mean, we all need a belt sander and a lathe, don't we? And we've got chop saw, polishing mop, uh, I mean, it's just literally everything here. You know, the list goes on and on and on. But it's essential to have these kinds of tools, you know, we're doing stuff, different things all the time. It's not all about paint on canvas. We're always trying different things. On which subject, I might add, as we uh, have a little look behind us. So apart from packing materials and other little bits and pieces, here's something quite interesting. So I've started to have a little play about with resin. Now, resin's quite an interesting material. So I've been trying things like, uh, what could I do with, with regular shapes? you know, like triangles and squares and that kind of thing. So we're trying different molding techniques. How can we inset things like crystals? Could this make a sculpture? What's the longevity of the clearness of the resin likes? So lots of different things in a kind of work in progress sort of thing. And this is what I mean about it being a working space. It's not all confined just to here. You know, we are using the whole space as a working environment. Carbon fiber, enamel paint, resin. Ooh. There's a combination of materials I think is rather exciting. So in here, in here, this is where the stretching is done around the frames. So remember we just, you know, when we just pass the canvases on the floor. So when we come to stretch them around the frames, we build the frames together, pop them on the table, and then we hand stretch them. And uh, like I say, well, every part of this process is done by hand. In fact, if we just have a little look down here, you can see this is one that's actually been done. So it's hand stapled on the back and physically stretched by hand so that's how they're done so when i can boast that they're handmade i mean they genuinely are there's nothing off the shelf with this oh actually i'll tell you what do I have a, let's just have a quick look at this you've just reminded me about something actually as i've walked past <clears throat> now remember out in the reception top of the stairs where we had the artwork with all the blocks in it well uh, this is the this is basically what those are made of these individual colored blocks so we've taken the raw material and cut them into all these different shapes. So that's the first part of the process. And then they need to be finished and arranged and cut to shape and to size, etc., etc. But what's super interesting is, is we're now working with a partner uh, about 100 miles from here who does a lot of mold making and tooling for the Formula One uh, industry. And they're a phenomenal, phenomenal company who do a lot of engineering work. And they are, well, I can't really reveal too much. Just, I'd just say, just stay, stay with your ears to the ground because we're doing something quite revolutionary. And I've cast a great big block of these, uh, about 500 pieces, I think, all cast together. And that's gonna be made into something and it's gonna be sculpted into a shape, which I can't reveal, but it's just going to look mind blowing. So we're taking this raw material and making something just extraordinary with it. So hopefully, without, uh, without too much weight, there'll be something hopefully uh, going out with that, but uh, I'll, I'll keep you posted on that anyway. But yeah, so exciting things, exciting things. Anyway, so that is, yes, yeah, so and that's this kind of you know, space for the finishing and the experiments and the pretty much everything else. Now, the one thing which I did promise you and, you know, <laughs> is probably for me the best bit of the entire building which is actually where the painting is done so i i think if you're ready should we should we go and have a look at that i think we should do i think we should do definitely because that actually for me is the i think it's the pinnacle bit you know you can look at all this and the beautiful art that's hanging around in this wonderful space but actually the bare bones of this is how and where it's created so this is what i want to show you now and for me, this is the absolute best bit. This is the bit I really like showing everybody when they come here. Okay, you ready? So, in here, this is the paint room. And this is split into two parts. So the first little bit I'm gonna show you 
is this mini pod. Now I've got two pods in here. We're gonna go into the second pod in just a second. So this part uh, is, well, it's a giant gazebo. And this normally houses the spin table, which is currently marginally disassembled. So we've taken the top off it just for storage purposes at the moment. And as you can see by the state of the outside of it, this is where some of the rotated spin works get done. So I can house them separately to the main part where I paint. Um, because I normally paint them in a different version of the paints, i.e. the non-toxic ones, I can do it out here and not have to wear a breathing mask. And of course, this is the rotating table, uh, whatever you want to call it. And uh, we built this ooh, yeah, to do uh, actually one of the live streams that we did not too long ago, which was, uh, which was quite something. Anyway, let's go into the main bit. So this giant black tent here was, uh, was built especially for the building and it's designed to contain all the harmful toxic chemicals in the paint. The paints are very, very special. And to be able to use them safely, I need to have a secure and uh, uh, special environment that I can extract all the fumes safely without it affecting you know, me as I go in. So uh, if you're ready, should we, should we go and have a look? All right, let's go and have a look, shall we? Step this way. So this first bit is the clean room and this houses the PC. Uh, where Adrian sits down and controls the live stream feeds. So, which is something that's what we do every Wednesday, but uh, the action is actually in there. So let's go and have a look. Right, come on in. So you're now in my sealed paint pod, my environment. So you can see a couple of paintings on the floor where there's a canvas which has been done already. And then there's one which is just drying and then possibly in sort of a week or so's time, I'll be painting something else on that. And then in here, we've got all the tech, all the lighting, a plethora of tools. Check out the floor. I mean, this is, the floor is pretty cool in itself. I think one day I'll have to chop this up and sell it, but uh, <laughs> love the floor bit. So this is where everything is done. So you can imagine me in here with my mask on, with the extractor on, lots of noise, lots of fumes. It's all very toxic, quite a difficult environment to work in, but this is where it's all created. And you can see that because sorry, it was all televised live. So a pretty cool space. I mean, it's taken a lot to get here. <laughs> Ridiculous amounts of work to get here, but we've achieved something. We're working with a brilliant material and it's, it's great. And it's really good because you can lock yourself in here and you just don't know what time of the day or night it is. It's me trying to tidy up while I'm walking around. Uh, and it's just great. I can literally isolate myself and boom, and I'm off. Um, so this is great, love it. But this is where everything is done. All the paintings, all the time, all done in here, with the exception of a few of the spin works outside. So that, that's the pod. That is the pod. And everything pretty much covered in paint. <laughs> Whew. How was that? That's pretty cool, isn't it? I, I do love that space. I, I just, I could literally lock myself in there all day long. <laughs> uh, and that's it. So then we're back in the main part of the gallery again. So you've now seen both parts of it. The L shape where we do all the stretching and the experimental stuff. And then the most important bit, which I think is where the painting's actually done. So that is the tour. That's my ultimate studio tour for 2020, ladies and gents. I really hope you've enjoyed that. Let's have a wander back out here again. Oh yeah, last bit, the office. Not, not that interesting, but a couple of workstations and normally got my laptop over there. So this is where all the equipment lives and where I pretty much just run everything. So that is that. So hopefully you found this tour really enjoyable and thank you very much obviously for watching this far. If you know anyone who might benefit from having seen what we do here, then please do share that and spread the word around. If you like this video, give us a subscribe, turn your notifications on because we've got tons of things coming up and we wouldn't want you to miss anything. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for your time. I look forward to seeing you soon.